Well, hey guys. Um, so it's so it's a Sunday morning and I'm just getting ready for my day and I thought I'd come on here and share with you guys some of my favorite sunscreens. You all seemed enthusiastic about that idea. Um, so first up, as far as physical sunscreens, I, I have to say far and away my favorite zinc titanium dioxide exclusive sunscreen for the face has to be the CeraVe sunscreen. Um, SPF 50 Invisible Zinc. I love this. It blends in easily. Um, it's zinc titanium dioxide exclusively. I find that the white cast of this um, is e is far. I find that the white cast of this is really easily masked with with an additional tinted sunscreen, and it has ceramides in it and niacinamide in it, and so it's very hydrating. And so the ceramides are helpful for the skin barrier and for dry skin, and the niacinamide can be helpful for kind of redness and inflammation potentially so I just really love this and I know it gets a bad review on consumer reports but um, it's a great sunscreen in my opinion and the SPF 50 was determined um, objectively as it is for all sunscreens um, so it can protect against a burn um, and that is what the SPF reading essentially tells you so um, I like this and it's so far one of my favorite physical only sunscreens um, and then I also um, really love I also really love the Neutrogena sheer zinc dry touch sunscreens this is one uh, for the body they're zinc oxide only and it's the titanium dioxide component that tends to contribute more to the whiteness so the zinc oxide uh, one is, is a pretty good one um, but I do find that this actually does leave a substantial white film. They have one for the body and one for the face. This one happens to be the one for the body. I've used both and like both of them and I think they're both fantastic. Um, neither of these sunscreens should break you out, um, you know, unless there's an ingredient in it that you're sensitive to or allergic to, in which case you can develop an acne-like uh, rash. Um, but I, I tolerated both of those quite well and I really, really liked them. Then I also really like the Aveeno Baby um, sunscreen. It has colloidal oatmeal in it. Um, this is for the body. It's too thick and greasy for the face, but it's great for the body. It's, it's um, won't uh, irritate your skin, and uh, it has a little bit of colloidal oatmeal in it, um, which is great for um, which is great for kind of hydrating the skin. It does, however, have um, a little bit of uh, flower leaf uh, extract which can potentially be irritating so I don't like that they put that in here I think that um, I think that some of the other baby sunscreens are a little better in that regard so this one's kind of so-so but I still like it on the body I use this at the beach for my body and I it did quite well um, and then as far as tinted sunscreens, hands down, far and away, absolutely continues to win, continues to win for me as far as a tinted zinc titanium dioxide exclusive sunscreen is the Elta MD UV Physical Broad Spectrum SPF 41. I just love this. I mean, it goes on very well. It's not drying at all. The tint is actually not really overwhelming. It's pretty light. Um, it does mask any underlying white film from a base layer, um, but I have... I have kind of uh, medium toned, I have medium to fair toned skin, so you know, if you're darker, you may find that this isn't enough tint. Um, but I really, really love this, and it continues to win in my mind. Um, so, as far as sunscreens, I also tried, as far as tinted sunscreens, I've also tried a few others that I don't have here. I've tried the one from Paula's Choice that was fantastic. Um, I've tried, um, I haven't tried the Coats one, but that's also supposed to be very good. Um, and then I also tried this um, from Aven, and uh, it's zinc titanium dioxide exclusively. Um, and I liked it, but it's really expensive, and the color actually was a little too dark for me. 
but this one's pretty good, you know. It's got, um, like the Elta MD and like most tinted um, sunscreens, it's got iron oxide in it, which I've mentioned on here before, can protect against some of the broader wavelengths of light and visible light that we now know contribute to um, dark spots and, and discoloration. Um, I do really like this. I would never buy this for myself um, on a regular basis, and the medium tone was a little too dark for me. But um, I do really like it. It's fragrance-free, oil-free, should not, you know, break you out. It says it may stain fabrics, and I did kind of find that to be the case, actually. Um, but this one is a good one. I don't know that it's worth the cost. And I will, uh, I'll just point something out to you guys. A lot of sunscreens, especially the expensive ones, are marketed as being luxury or whatever because they supposedly have antioxidants in them. And, you know, there was a study that looked at antioxidants in cosmetics, and 99.9% .9 of them were, like, basically, use, basically ineffective as antioxidants. Antioxidants are highly unstable in topical form, so... I mean, I, I'm just telling you that, like, don't fall for the antioxidants in your creams kinds of things, because it's a waste of money. It's just, it's just a marketing thing, and it's like, it's just an extra ingredient that's unlikely to be functional and is more likely to be irritating and, and allergenic. Um, same goes with vitamin C, and that's why I don't use vitamin C serums for that reason. So vitamin C is an antioxidant, highly unstable in topical forms, and unlikely to be functional as an antioxidant when applied to to the skin. Um, so yeah, there's that one. I do like it, but I would not repurchase it. Now this is a sunscreen that you guys brought to my attention and I recently, and I've been trying out for the past two days. It's the Australian Gold Mineral Lotion SPF 50. On glance of the ingredients of this, I, I like it a lot. It's zinc titanium oxide, it's zinc titanium dioxide exclusively. I think it speaks to many of you in that it's cruelty free. It's fragrance free, which I think is great because fragrance can be very problematic in skincare ingredients. Um, and it's, um, you know, free of like parabens and things like that, which are safe. But uh, if you are sensitized to them, can be allergenic, okay? So they're safe ingredients, um, but if you have a problem with them, they are not in this. Um, and as, as far as, however, this does, does not work for me. It, um, I've tried it for the past two days, and my skin does not tolerate this whatsoever. And I'm suspicious of the fruit extract in this, this Kakuda plum fruit. I don't think that that's an ingredient that's great in skincare, honestly. Um, I think it uh, has the potential to be irritating. And, I, you know, I'm going to keep saying this with regards to botanic extracts, but particularly in sunscreens, um, botanic oils and natural oils, they're not a pure ingredient. They're kind of a mambo combo, and they're not stable, you know. They have the same shortcomings as any other ingredient. They, they lack the stability. They lack the stability to ensure function of, of what you might think that they could do as far as a benefit. And as they degrade, it's not that they degrade into something that's going to become like toxic. It's not like they degrade into some like life-threatening toxin, but they degrade. And as they degrade, little parts of, of them become more noticeable to your immune system and they become allergenic and irritating. And fragrance is a classic example of that. Um, botanic oils are a classic example of that. Tea tree oil um, and, you know, these antioxidants and things. Um, so really less is more with skincare and skincare ingredients. And if they're like saying that their sunscreens got added this, that, and the other. I mean, really go scratching your head. But this one, in my opinion, um, is fantastic. Like I would, but I, I might feel pretty, I'd feel pretty comfortable recommending this to someone to try. But I would say save your receipt on this because I got a pretty bad um, reaction to this. I didn't tolerate it well. I don't know if you can see here up close. This is where I've been applying it. And I got what's an, called an irritant dermatitis from it. And I think it has to do with um, one of the uh, botanic uh, fruit extracts in it. Um, and I have never had that occur with a, a sunscreen before. So I'm not going to be able to tolerate that. But you guys seem to love it. And, you know, it seems like a good sunscreen as far as offering good sun protection. So I really like that. All right, so that's sort of the physical or mineral sunscreen realm. A combination sunscreen, which if you missed my sunscreen Q&A where I kind of um, describe the differences, be sure you check that out. It's uh, part one of my sunscreen Q&A. 
but a combination sunscreen has um, zinc oxide in it as well as a few chemical filters as well and this guys is winning in my opinion this is the Elta MD UV Sport um, SPF uh, this is the Elta MD UV Sport SPF 50 um, broad spectrum uh, sunscreen I really, really love this. I have been using this throughout the week, um, uh, in like midday before I get into my before I leave for work to go walk across the parking lot. I've been applying this like over my face, over my midday face, if you will, and it just blends in really well. I let it set up for about 20 minutes before I go outside, so I try and get it on my face, you know. Um, before I go out. I'm not always great about that. I do the best I can. We all do. Um, but this is a good one for reapplying throughout the day just to continue to give yourself a little bit of sun protection. It's fragrance free, paraben free. It really doesn't have anything useless in it and that's why I love this. Um, you know these products aren't cruelty free which is unfortunate. Um, you know they're not marketed that way but um, you know I don't entirely know what exactly um, a company has to do uh, to demonstrate cruelty free uh, in their products, um, you know, and if uh, sunscreens ever, yeah, I I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I've really been loving this one a lot, and I, I recommend this, and I also strongly recommend my, um, there you go. Yeah, I mean, the LTMD sunscreens, while they're a little bit pricier, I just find that they continue to win in my book in terms of having minimal junk in them and just like effective, simple um, ingredients. I really love these two, honestly. They're some of my favorite sunscreens, and I will continue to repurchase them. All right, and then moving into just plain chemical sunscreens, which many of you probably don't tolerate very well. They um, have a variety of filters in them that, you know, are all safe, as I mentioned in my Q&A, which if you missed part two, check it out. I talk about the safety of chemical sunscreens and, like, the concerns for avobenzone and that sort of thing. They're all very safe um, in humans. We don't have any data to suggest that they're not. They can degrade with time, and just like the botanic oils, they can degrade and become allergenic and irritating. Um, and many people don't tolerate them, but if you have no problem with, with chemical sunscreens and you like them, um, this is a great one by Neutrogena, the Ultra Sheer 100 Plus. I've used this in the morning um, for my full face uh, sunscreen and loved it. It won't break you out. It's a great moisturizing sunscreen. I just really love this, and I think you can pick this up at Costco. Um, these, do need to be replaced every, these do need to be replaced every three years. Um, but I really am loving that. So in addition to the Neutrogena Ultra Sheer 100 Plus, probably one of my favorite um, everyday facial sunscreens that's chemical from them is the uh, Clear Face. Can you guys see that? It's the Neutrogena Clear Face Breakout Free Liquid Lotion SPF 30. It is a chemical sunscreen, but I really love this one as well. Um, so I like those. A chemical sunscreen that I um, have used in the past that I'm not particularly fond of is this Aveeno Positively Radiant um, sunscreen. I liked, I was, I've been drawn to this um, and mentioned this because it has soy extract, which can impart a brightening effect. Soy um, extracts uh, do have some data to show that they can inhibit some of the biology of how pigment is produced and uh, can lead to a brightening effect. So I really, you know, these Aveeno Positively Radiant products, the soy component of this seems to be effective. I've seen brightening effects with it, but in this sunscreen, this sunscreen has a lot of fragrance in it, and um, I just don't, don't tolerate it well. I wouldn't recommend this as a sunscreen. They do have a night cream that has the soy in it, so I would say if you're motivated to try a soy-containing thing, go with their, their, give their night cream a try first and see how you, how you like that. And then another chem another chemical sunscreen that I don't care for is this Beach Defense. Um, I've used this. I don't think I've ever shown myself using this um, because I really don't like using it. Um, you know, this appeals to the sense of convenience, but um, you know, it's kind of useless. Um, where I've tried using this before is like on my lips, and it honestly it works pretty well in that regard um, on the tops of my hands. Um, you know, in a pinch. Um, but this is not this is not a great way to do it, honestly. Uh, the stick forms don't really 
necessarily distribute the molecule very well, but it does go on really well, as you can see. I mean, it's pretty easy to apply. But I mean, you kind of got to keep stroking yourself with this deodorant stick all over the place. I don't know. Um, but it doesn't clog your pores, and it's kind of like a little neck massage here. <laughs> you could do i mean if you tolerate chemical sunscreen it's waterproof um i would not rely on this solely at all i would not rely on this at the beach you need a thick all over uh sunscreen lotion honestly but you know where else this is good it, it does it smells kind of good too this is good in the scalp too you know to do one of these i mean this is a uh this is a uh fill in the gaps kind of thing you know when you like uh, paint your walls. I've talked about sunscreens as like painting your walls. You come in with a base layer, a base coat, and then you come in with another layer to cover up any skip areas. And you know, and this is just kind of like, you know, when you come wrong with the paintbrush at the end and you kind of, you kind of mop it up a little bit, you kind of touch up with like a paintbrush. That's what this is. Okay. Do not rely on this, but it does smell good and it's kind of nice going on. Um, it's SPF 50. I wouldn't run out and buy this, but you know, it's kind of fun to, to massage yourself with it. I like it in that regard. Okay. And then as far as uh, sunscreens for the lips, um, this is winning in my mind. This is the uh, this is the win in my mind. This is the one that you should be using. This is the one that is totally worth it in my mind. It's the Vanny Cream. Uh, it's zinc titanium dioxide exclusively in um, a petrol autumn base. It's very moisturizing. It goes on pretty thick. You kind of have to like be a little patient with it, but it doesn't do that stringy goopy thing. Um, here, I'll just show you. See, it goes on a little thick. Be patient. I like this one. This one's good. Sunscreen on the lips is critical. Um, you know, sun-related cancers on the lip are very common, and um, you want to protect yourself. And, and you know, sun-related aging around the lips is also very common. And this one is, is a win in my mind. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, they also make a sunscreen that I love, and I was looking for it here in the apartment. I was looking for it, and I think I used it all up and tossed the bottle. Um, but their sunscreens are fantastic. Um, and if you're somebody who has sensitive skin, Vanny Cream products are fantastic. They don't have fragrance or, you know, any common allergens or things like that. So, um, you know, if you're worried about any of these ingredients, I, I really love Vanny Cream. They can't, I don't think they can make the claim of... Uh, of being uh, cruelty free, but they don't have parabens, they don't have uh, fragrance, they don't have masking fragrance, they don't have lanolin or any of the formaldehydes or formaldehyde resins that people can become allergic to. Um, so I really like it. Um, one product though that I was just I've been disappointed with is the Elta MD UV lip balm. It has their transparent zinc, so it's got zinc in it. It's a combination sunscreen. Um, and I find that this actually does a lot, it does the stringy thing, and I get irritation from this, so, um, this hasn't worked out well for me at all. I don't think this is a good one. Some of you guys have said good things about the sun bum ones that, um, have, a, like, ni a nice fragrance in it. Those are chemical sunscreens, though, so if you're sensitive to chemical sunscreens, um, they may not be a good choice for you. If you are sensitive to chemical sunscreens and someone who every sunscreen that you use burns or whatever, do try this one on your lips and see what you think. I think you would tolerate this one quite well. So, as far as the sunscreens that I've tried and used, um, and have in the house, those are, those are some. So, that's kind of a rundown on all my favorite favorite sunscreens and some that you know I've tried and didn't care for. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye!